This video aims to explain the law of radioactive decay, the decay constant, and equations which stem from these with example calculation. If you're unsure what the half-life of a radioactive isotope means, you might be better looking at an introductory video on this. The link is in the video description below here. But I will start with a brief reminder. The half-life of a radioactive isotope is the time taken for half of those radioactive atoms to decay. Looking at it slightly differently, it is also the time taken for the strength of the radioactivity to fall to half of its original value. So if the value of the half-life was 10 years, then after 10 years the activity would be halved. After another 10 years, 20 years, the activity is halved again to a quarter. And after 30 years, the activity is halved again to an eighth. But what if you wanted to know exactly how much radioactivity there was after, say, 12 years or 25 years? Well, we'd have to do a little bit of maths. But first of all, there's a couple of terms I need to explain. Starting with the decay constant. The radioactive decay constant, lambda, is a probability. It is the probability that any particular nucleus will decay in a unit of time. As an equation, that's probability equals lambda delta t, where delta t is a time much less than the half-life. The radioactive decay law states that this probability for a particular isotope is constant. Derived from this law, we get the expression that the number of atoms after a certain time, t, is equal to the number of atoms at the start multiplied by Euler's number, that is the base of natural logarithms, to the power of minus lambda, the decay constant, t. Because the amount of radioactivity is directly proportional to the number of radioactive atoms available, we can simply replace the numbers with a the activity or rate of decay, and rate of decay is much easier to measure directly. Starting with this equation, we'll rearrange it, dividing both sides by a naught. After one half life, a naught will be half of a, so we now have a half equals e to the minus lambda times the half life. Taking logs on both sides, we get the natural log of 2 equals lambda t. And the natural log of 2 is equal to 0.693, so a final equation. I'll go through an example using this equation, or these equations. If we base it upon barium-140, which is commonly used as a tracer, it has a half-life of 12.8 days. We've got a sample which has an activity measured at 200 counts per minute. That's after taking away the background count. Let's work out what the activity will be three weeks later. We can use this equation to work out the decay constant. We'll work in days so that lambda is going to be 0.693 divided by 12.8, which as you can see works out at 0.0541 days to the minus 1. We'll now use a second equation to work out the activity after this 21 days, substituting in the values as you can see. We'll rearrange that to get rid of the minus sign. So, using a calculator to make it a bit easier, we have 200 divided by e to the power of 0 0.0541 multiplied by 21. That comes out at 64.2. That sounds to be a reasonable answer, but when you ever got a calculation which is fairly complex like this, it's always a good idea just to check it through to see if it's sensible. Well, 21 days is more than the half-life. So your final answer has got to be less than half of the original. It's got to be under 100. After two half-lives, the count rate would fall to 50. And that is longer than the 21 days. 
So 64 sounds sensible. Thank you for watching. I hope you found that useful. There are links here to supporting notes on the website and also to a follow-up video on carbon dating.